Brian, Brian, Brian Michael. We're at uh, Shot Vintage Sports Store. Love the layout. Thank I, you. I love the uh, the location, everything like that. Thank you for allowing me into your store. Of course. And uh, doing this interview today. Um, so you know, I just have a couple questions for you today, uh, Brian. You know uh, about yourself, the store, and the fan base as a whole for my documentary. Sure. Um, so to start, Brian, uh, just a little bit about yourself. Um, are you from Philadelphia? Yes. All right. So which part? From Northeast Philly. Northeast Philly. Okay. And you know, being that um, you're an Eagles fan, it seems like you're a diehard uh, Eagles fan as well. Yep. Um, you know, tell me, you know, one of your your favorite memories of all time, and what kind of solidifies uh, your fandom. Um, well, it kind of. Uh, st I started off actually half Eagles fan, half Redskins fan, if you yeah, believe okay. it or not. I had an uncle that lived in D.C. He was a cameraman for the local uh, sports station, so he would always send me like really cool Redskins stuff. They were good, obviously, then with Mark Rippon going to the Super Bowl. And one day after the Eagles beat the Reds or the Redskins beat no no <laughs> the Eagles beat the Redskins on a last minute uh, field goal, um, I was at home watching the game with my family and. I ran into the coat closet because I was I knew my dad was going to make fun of yeah. me because I was a Redskins fan and he's obviously an Eagles fan. And I was sitting there in the dark clo coat closet and I was like, you know what? Uh, I think I should just become an Eagles fan. All my mm -hmm. friends at school are Eagles fans. I was like seven years old maybe. Uh, my dad's making fun of me. Uh, what's, the, what's the point? So, I mean, that really shows you're born into being an Eagles fan. Mm -hmm. There's no way around it if you grow up in the city. Um, you take it with you if you move away and um, it's just always there yeah, it's always on exactly you know uh, with myself like you said you, uh, even if you move away you take it with you same thing where I grew up into the fan base you know being from uh, Lancaster Pennsylvania and uh, you know it's cool to see that it doesn't matter if you're in California or you know down south if you're from the uh, the area you stay a fan and that's pretty cool to see um, so before we get into like the fan base and stuff uh, in your in your eyes uh, what where's the best cheesesteak to get in Philly Best cheesesteak, I like uh, Steve's, Steve's, Prince of Steaks. Okay. Yeah, right. I mean, growing up in the Northeast, there was one up there right off the boulevard, and there's now one here in Center City, too, so that's mm -hmm. my go-to. I also like Oregon steaks down on 10th and Oregon. Okay. Yes. All right, cool. And then, you know, what makes the Eagles fan base, you know, different from the rest? You know, you said we grew up into it. Is there anything else that kind of, um, you know, differentiates us from, like, you know, a different fan base? Well... The fans make you earn it as a player. You know, you can't just come in and expect to show off or uh, be a fan favorite. You know, you have to work hard to get there. And once you're there, you know, they embrace you like no other city, right? So you have fans like in uh, Seattle, for instance, where they think they invented being football fans. And, you know, this is more than that. It's not about the show. It's not about, you know, who's the loudest. It's about rooting for your team. Uh, and wanting to win mm -hmm. all the time and that's the thing about being an Eagles fan and up until this year it was about wanting to win all the time and never winning yeah um, so finally they had a, a chance to win this year and it was amazing yeah how was that moment like what were you doing uh, at that moment where you at I was at home with some friends we had a little party um, it was obviously a nail biter to the very end and once they won, uh, we started ringing pots and pans, or, or banging pots and pans, ringing uh, bells, um, and we grabbed a bunch of beers and ran down to Broad Street. Yes, sir. Yes, so we weren't too far from there, and it was just a mass of people, and everyone was down there. Um, fireworks were going off, bouncing off the buildings, mm -hmm. uh, which was something I've never seen before. Um, so it was a lot of fun. Everyone was happy. The cops were celebrating. Um, everyone's in a good mood and again that's not something you really ever see in Philly so mm. um, it was a nice change of pace at least for a day and a week with the parade in there too yeah uh, now going off that change of pace you know like you were saying um, you know we've always you know we are trying to yearning for that win uh, and finally we finally get it and I know for at least a little bit the energy in the city was different um, now, you know, I talked to other couple people and from an outsider's perspective for at least a little bit, there seemed to be a lot of, you know, optimism and sure. things like that, you know, if we're going forward. Um, now, uh, with, you know, that tapering off, do you see, do you think there's a, a different energy in the city still or is it still kind of like the, 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 the gritty city as it is before, kind of just yeah, came back? Yeah, it's back to normal. Back to normal. It, it, it is back to normal. And I think it just comes and goes with 
the play of the teams. You know, it's not just about if they're they're winning or not, but you know, is it enjoyable to watch? Is it good football? Is it good baseball? Um, obviously, winning comes with that. And if it's ugly, right? If the Eagles can't play a full sixty minutes and the games aren't fun to watch, then people are going to be upset. You know, yeah. that's not what they want to see. Um, that's not the experience they want to have on Sundays. So um, it's just, you know, not as cool as it was last year. Because last year they were killing teams. Mm-hmm. Carson Wentz, um, you know, was just thrashing teams. They were scoring points. And this year they're, they're really not just mm-hmm. doing that yet. Yeah. Now let's just talk about uh, Shy Vintage Sports' store a little bit. Uh, before we got on camera, you talked a little bit about um, how – um, this store it was a different sports store before, and then you guys rebranded it. Um, can you go into that a little bit, and what kind of like um, sparked you to, to take on that task? Sure. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, it used to be uh, about five years ago a sports store here. Um, we got involved uh, through my website, Phillies Nation, um, selling some of the Phillies products online, and eventually uh, the former owners approached me to see if I wanted to buy the place. They were looking to sell it. Um, I got some friends together that all had, you know, different interests in Philly sports, history, um, retail, fashion, things like that, and uh, we started the store just like that. All the teams were pretty terrible then. Mm-hmm. Um, it was the end of the Chip Car- uh, Kelly era. The process hasn't hadn't started. The Phillies were still trying to regain that old magic, and the Flyers were just the Flyers. Yeah. Um, so we kind of learned. Uh, we learned that people like a lot of our uh, vintage gear, um, the stuff that we do with local artists, the original shirts. Um, so we started doing more of that, and that you know helped get us through the lean times uh, in Philly sports up until you know earlier this year when when things really exploded for the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Now, before you know starting, what were you doing for work before? Uh, I lived in D.C. and I was working as a digital uh, consultant, building okay. websites, online fundraising. Um, things like that. Mm-hmm. Was it was it a dream of yours to start your own store, or just kind of just popped out of nowhere? Uh, it kind of popped up, but it was always a thought. You know, I had Phillies Nation uh, for now 14 years, and so I've always had an interest in sports and and sports business, and it just kind of seemed like a natural progression from that. Um, you know, we had a, a large fan community there with the Phillies. Obviously, if you're a Phillies fan, you're probably four for four anyway and um, that helped launch mm-hmm. the store. Great, great. Now, um, you know, you said you have vintage designs and stuff like that, and, you know, you have a lot of designs that we'll probably get into that, you know, go really, like, far back, you know. Um, how much research did you did you put into this, you know, trying to, you know, not only, like, perfect a design, but also have the, the artist, find the perfect artist that, that uh, you know, to make the design for you? Uh, well, a lot of research goes into it. Um, uh, my business partner, Johnny Goodtimes, uh, and his uh, team of designers uh, from around the city, about five or six folks, they'll get together. He'll do a lot of the research. He's into the, the, the sports history side of things. Uh, we work with a lot of uh, professors and journalists, too. Ray Dittinger, um, uh, Jason Stark come in all the time. So, you know, we help, we use their expertise to, to learn more and get the research. Ray Dittinger, inspired our Philadelphia Rambler shirt. It was yeah. an old hockey team here in the 50s. He asked if we had one. Uh, we never heard of the team, so we, we did our research, looked it up, found an old, old program cover um, that we used uh, for, for a new shirt, and he loved it. So that's amazing. That, if he loves it, then then you know you're doing a good thing. That, that's pretty cool. Um, the Ramblers, like when did they play? They played in the early 50s. Um, they were uh, before the Flyers, um, and yeah, they didn't last too long. Yeah, uh, a right. lot of hockey before the Flyers uh, never really caught on here in Philly until then. So credit to Ed Snyder and, mm-hmm. and the team for bringing the team here. Yeah, and uh, so with the store, uh, what are some of the, the challenges you face? I know not everything uh, you know, goes your way. and I do have uh, you know a dream one day to maybe have my own brick and mortar uh, clothing store with my production company. So uh, just tell me you know, some of the challenges that you face. Sure. Uh, well, you certainly can't control what happens on the field or on the court, so you have to figure out ways to, you know, mitigate the up and down swings, especially of Philly sports. So, like I said, the vintage styles, um, the local artists, 
you know, they're always coming up with ideas that people like. So if we're not selling a ton of Sixers gear, which we didn't when we first um, opened the store, um, we may had vintage stuff that people still like. Dr. J, you know, Moses Malone, Allen Iverson, of course. Those guys are never going to get traded. They're always going to be loved. Um, so focusing on some things that kind of help you get through the, the slow times. You know, it's seasonal for us. Um, the holiday season, the Eagles season is always the busiest. So kind of understanding that. Um, and then, you know, building your brand uh, both here in person. We do in-store in events with different, uh, like I said, authors, historians, and online as well. Social media, um, having a good e-commerce site. Um, and just you know taking care of customers mm -hmm. that's the big thing so growing slowly uh, but surely is, mm -hmm. is the way to go I think that's pretty cool and like as we were talking before how when the Eagles won the Super Bowl um, you're almost sold out of everything yes. you know, it's kind of like a, a, a second Christmas uh, did now did that exceed your expectations like you didn't think you were gonna sell that much yeah no one knew what no one ever believed that the Eagles would win yeah. the Super Bowl, so it's really hard to even fathom that. So, yeah, uh, obviously it was Christmas, so we were kind of wiped out from that, but they kept winning, we kept bringing more stuff in as fast as possible, and uh, it was just flying off the shelves. Mm -hmm. uh, we had underdog shirts that benefited the SPCA here in the city, mm -hmm. um, knit hats. It was, it was a cold time of the year, and then once the parade came, everyone wanted um, throwback knit hats. So. We sold out of them, um, you know, as quick as they came in. Great, great. And uh, you kind of went into it a little bit. Uh, um, is there anything else uh, with the challenges? Is there any, uh, what's your daily, day-to-day uh, -day routine like, you know, when you open the store up? Um, it could be a little bit of anything. So I guess that's kind of the main challenge, being able to handle anything that gets thrown at you, whether it's a technical issue for the website or getting zoning permits for a new pop-up store, mm -hmm. um, just kind of having the resources and knowing the right people um, and having good employees that can mm -hmm. help you do all those sorts of things. So getting a good team together is probably your first uh, move. All right, and a couple uh, more questions. Um, you know, you said you have a pop-up store now in uh, New Jersey. Yep. Um, so what's like? what's your dream for, for Shive Sports? Is it to do more pop-ups? Is it have another brick and mortar store? in the future expand what, what do you have in mind what's your vision yeah um, there's a lot of different ways we could go uh, like I said our online store um, it grows every year um, so we have a lot of Phillies fans from all over the country Philly fans Eagles Sixers Flyers um, so that's cool seeing that um, and then yeah you know eventually maybe getting into some other cities uh, might make sense you know we would again have to partner with the right team we would need some people that you know are really into sports in Pittsburgh or Brooklyn or, or Baltimore or wherever um, the next place would be and um, you know because we don't know that and that wouldn't be right it would be fair to the, the customers and fans there so doing that at some point the pop-up definitely um, you know shows what a bigger store can be we're here in Center City um, so we're not uh, we don't have a huge footprint um, real estate is at a premium but over in Jersey there's plenty of land and and seeing what we can do with bigger spaces is, is fun too. We have a Papa shot over there, so there's basketball yeah. tournaments all day long, um, people coming in and out, you know. That would be the only thing that would fit in here yeah. if we did that here. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's great. Well, you know, uh, but we're gonna, I guess, start getting to a couple of designs. I want to sure. uh, so uh, showcase a couple of designs here at the store. Uh, but, you know, that's uh, the end of, you know, the sit down interview. Thank you, Brian. Still love the store and uh, things like that, and uh, hopefully, um, you know, you guys keep growing and still prospering. Hopefully, you know, the Philly sports keeps going on the on the rise. Absolutely. Like Thanks, Art. Thank you. All right. And so, uh, do you have? Did you have like one um, artist? Do these already have a couple? Uh, we have a couple of different artists. We have uh, like four or five mm -hmm. artists, and they rotate. All right. They have different skills, so you know, one might be better with illustrations. One might be better with with. Uh, text and fonts. So, uh huh. Um, depending on what kind of design we're looking for. Okay. Uh, we'll talk to that. Person. Which which uh like your favorite design that you've done so far? Um, I do like this one. You know, obviously it's been a bestseller too, uh, but it certainly captures the feeling of the city and mm -hmm. it's uniquely Philadelphia. Yeah. Uh, only people that are from Philly understand what John means. Uh, even once they learn it, they think it's funny too. So that's kind of endearing as well. But yeah, it just captured the emotion of the city that day. Everyone was so happy. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, it's hard to describe. And uh-huh. I hope we get to feel it again. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I forgot to ask you. No, we're we're five and six right now, uh, and you know the Cowboys won yesterday, so it's kind of looking grim a little bit. What's your prediction for the rest of the season? Uh, it's going to be a tough rest of the season. You know, I, I hope they win on Monday against the Redskins. So I see that um, they're going to have to beat Dallas. You know, that's what it comes down to. Uh, usually, you got to win your division, and that's going to be it. You know, they're not going to run away with it like last year, thirteen and three. Um, but they're going to have to win the rest of the division games, um, and and that's it. If they can do that, great. Like I said, I think they'll beat da- um, the Redskins. It pretty much all will come down to that Eagles-Dallas game like it does mm-hmm. so often. So I think right. that'll be the, the, the big part of the season. Right. After that, who knows? Once again, the playoffs, maybe that underdog mentality will kick back. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, so here we have a mix of our baseball and football wall, some hats. Um, you can see in the background's all green. Uh, it's green plywood, which was actually the original outfield wall at Veterans Stadium. Um, the Philly Sports Hall of Fame was kind enough to loan us a lot of different uh, memorabilia from sports history, from the Palestra, the Spectrum, uh, Convention Hall, um, and here at the Vet, too. Um, so it, it's a cool thing to show people. Um, it obviously doesn't have any padding, so it, it just goes to show how they played uh, back in the 70s. Um, up at the top are two... Uh, pretty popular designs. The one on the right is Phil and Phyllis, uh, which was actually the Phillies mascot before the Fanatic. So everyone knows the Fanatic. Um, they may not be familiar with Phil and Phyllis, so that's a pretty fun story uh, to tell. Um, also, the White Elephant, uh, which was a mascot of the Philadelphia A's, who were popular here in the city before they moved away in the mid-50s. And some people know that the A's used to be here, some don't. Again, those are some of the fun things we get to talk about here at the store uh, and people get to learn about when they come yeah. in. Another uh, piece of Philly sports history we have from the Hall of Fame is this uh, Spectrum backboard. Um, it was actually the backboard the night uh, Christian Leitner hit his shot against Kentucky. So pretty famous. Everyone knows that shot. Not everyone necessarily knows it happened here in Philly at the Spectrum. Um, and this is the backboard that he hit the shot on. Um, pretty cool. We have an old um, 24 second clock from there as well. Um, as well as seats from Convention Hall uh, and Shy Park, too. Um, so a lot of cool memorabilia, um, things to talk about when people come in and they're looking to shop and, and talk sports. And uh, about Shy uh, Ballpark, did you have any other names in mind, or did you kind of just like click? I was like, oh, let's need to store uh, that. No, that's a funny story. We had uh, several names in mind. Uh, we did a, a poll on our website um, to let people pick from five, and, of course, two of them tied. Um, so they have the same exact number of votes out of thousands of votes. Um, we had a pick between Midtown Vintage Sports and Scheib Vintage Sports. Um, and, of course, Scheib um, is more Philadelphia, um, a little less generic than Midtown. And, you know, what better way to, to capture Philly sports history than that place? Great, great. Um, I think that's it. Do you have any, anything else you want to talk about the store? Uh, now we just celebrated our five-year anniversary, mm-hmm. um, so it, it's been a fun ride, and we're looking forward to, to five more years and a few more Super Bowls in there, too. All right, I just wanted to thank Brian for the We Won That Jaunt shirt. Thank you, Shy Sports. Love you. I loved it here. Yep. Love, uh, love doing this interview and stuff like that. Um, and hopefully, um, you know, we cross paths so, again. And yeah. Uh, yeah, you can check us out at shibesports.com or on Instagram, shibesports, Twitter, shibesports, um, or just Google us. You can find us. All right. Thank you. We won that jaunt. Let's get it. Go Birds. Go Birds. It. Do you have any anything else you want to talk about the store? Uh, now we just celebrated our five-year anniversary, um, so it, it's been a fun ride, and we're looking forward to to five more years and a few more Super Bowls in there too. Yes, sir. Thank you.